Hello there. All right, brethren. Welcome to the cast and crew interviews. I'll be asking the in-depth questions you'll want to know about the people that made this movie possible. The only question I think now the viewers want answered is what the heck are you doing on this part of the DVD? At least I was in the movie. You were in the movie, yes, as a prop. But you weren't in the movie as a star. When the stars want to talk, they're going to be talking to me. So that's why I'm going to be doing these interviews. We're a double act. We're doing the interviews. That's why I'm doing the interviews. We're doing the interviews. Okay, okay. If it makes you happy, that's why we're doing the interviews. Now, I understand that Alfonso had you each write an essay. What was, what was that all about? Um, well, actually, I didn't. I never did the essay. <laughs> <laughs> Choose a character. You didn't yeah. hand in your homework. No, I, I didn't do it, but... Uh, yeah, he know. basically asked us to write an essay about uh, who we thought our characters were, why they did the things they do, um, their background, their feelings, their thoughts, how they've changed uh, in the first year of Hogwarts, second year of Hogwarts, and now into the third year. Um, and what comes to and it was, I, I felt really so pleased with myself. Because yeah. you hadn't handed yours in, and I felt so pleased. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. So I had mine, the next day Emma comes in with all 16 pages of hers. <laughs> it's like, frighteningly good yeah. casting, really, the way you've all reacted to this. <laughs> well, we just got a chance to explore the characters slightly more, because yeah. they're growing up, basically. Yeah, and so there's more scope to the characters than in We're the books. We're teenagers. What is the, the first thing that typically fans do when they see you in public? It kind of quite a lot of kind of double takes. First of all, yeah. yeah. I think there's almost this theory that we can't actually go out in public, so it must just be somebody who looks, looks like, like us. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about it. But I mean, that's kind of a myth. We do actually go out. Yeah, I was mm. in Topshop the other day, and this, 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 um, this the woman who's working there comes up and goes, <laughs> "It's so funny. You look exactly like the girl who plays Hermione." It's like, yeah, yeah it's because I am. Excuse me? What? Sorry? I have to travel in a handbag so the girls won't get me. <laughs> you know what they say, once you've gone out with a shrunken head, you never go back. <laughs> you see how your mouth has come unstitched? <laughs> that could easily be restitched. Bah. Yeah? What is the most ridiculous thing that, that a fan has ever said to you? Well, I've had proposals of marriage. I had one, which was bizarre. Tell it was you terrifying. Know, it was Dan, and, marry me. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was the weirdest one. It was this big sign. And then the other one was the towel girl. Oh, okay. oh. Um, the towel girl? The towel girl. The towel girl. She's a legend. <laughs> um, so what did the towel girl do? We were filming... Um, I was doing MTV in New York, and it was freezing cold out. I mean, it was, it's not like it was a warm summer's day. It was so cold mm. and I got up and they took me over to the window and there was a girl standing down there wearing nothing but a Harry Potter towel with a sign it, that said it doesn't get much better no, than no, this so with, a sign, man. with a sign that says nothing comes between me and Harry Potter yeah it was great <laughs> yeah I bet it was <laughs> it was yeah in the movie you encounter a boggart uh, who transforms itself into your worst fear if you individually encountered boggarts, what do you think they'd be? Because um, you look like well, you love that pressure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, I'm actually really scared of spiders. I hate spiders, just like wrong, really. You're wimpier than Johnny. What animal or animagus? Is it animagus? Animagus. I, animagus. <laughs> oh, I've been corrected animagus. by Hermione Granger. Right. <laughs> what, what do you think the other two would morph into? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. Said that I Come on. Like a frog. I didn't say you look like a frog. You did in one of the pictures. Did I? Yeah. One of the stills. I, I was. God, that, God, I was, that was during my horrible face. Yeah. Um, nice. I don't know. I don't Come know. On, what animal would you like to be? You like camels. Camels are quite So cool, you yeah. can be a camel. It's a handy thing to be, you know? You can go a <laughs> long time without yeah, water. Exactly. <laughs> I, sort of, yeah. I, I have absolutely no idea about I'm sorry. Throw one in. Come on. Um, yeah, come on, Dan. Come no on. No pressure or anything. You're meant to be able to, you know, do things like that. I know, but I can't. You are the boy Potter. <laughs> I'm meant to be able to. Hey, how about um, a potato head? Hey. A platypus? Oh, Help me. <laughs> uh, a lion. <laughs> a lion. <laughs> <laughs> a big <laughs> <crap. laughs> Okay. What do you think he'd be? What do you think he'd be? Well, I know he has a real thing for werewolves. No, just wolves. 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 No, no. Wolves. 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 OK. I convinced you that I was a werewolf. Oh, well, no, you did, I did, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I told him I was a werewolf. I believed you as well. <laughs> no, you couldn't have done really. Oh, I did, yeah. <laughs> OK, fellas, you are, you know, probably the most famous under-16-year-olds on this earth. The girls must be... It must be a glorious time. Plenty uh, of towel girls. Yes, many, many towel girls. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's very cool, yeah. 
What are the things you'd like to be able to do that you can do in Harry Potter that you can't do in the real world? Would Quidditch be one of them? What, what, what are the sort of things you'd... If you could yeah. pick one thing? I think I'd probably like, have, like, the invisibility cloak. Because then I could just sn sneak into so many rock concerts, it'd be great. You don't need a cloak to sneak into concerts, just rolling under the turnstile like I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do have a favourite band. OK, what's your favourite band? Isn't it obvious? Talking heads! <laughs> <laughs> you walked into that one. And lastly, guys, when a new Harry Potter book comes out, you, you must now, you know, having started out just as Harry Potter book fans, it must have really changed the way you read these books now. You do kind of start to look at it as, in a, oh my God, if, well, I'll, I'll be doing this. <laughs> no, for you it's not a book, it's a list of things <laughs> to do. Yeah. You know. I read the fourth book as we started the first film. Right. And the Yule Ball... Yeah. Me and Ron are like, I remember just reading, oh my god, we're wearing dresses? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me? What? <laughs> I've got to no. do that. Yeah. Surely. Do you, have you, did you have a similar moment when you read that or did you read oh, it? Oh, yeah, definitely. That scared me quite a bit. But do you sort of, when you're looking at it, thinking that's another two weeks in blue screen? Or, oh, no. Yeah. Does it sort of ruin your enjoyment or heighten your enjoyment of the book? I think for me it heightens it because mm, it's yeah. like, oh my god, I'm actually going to get to do this because you know there are kids all over the world dreaming of this stuff yeah. you live and you're dream. actually going to be able to do it. It's fantastic. What about you? Hey, you Johnny! What? Don't you think I'd be a great Harry Potter? Oh, yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to waving a wand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Emma? Now that I've done the film, when I'm reading the book, I can see Dan, Rupert and I actually doing yeah. it. Yeah. It's really funny, I have this little picture in, in my head. <clears throat> OK, that's me done. So now it's time to turn to the dr head and ask him to ask you his one question. Daniel, isn't our scene together the highlight of the film? Don't you think it's head and shoulders above the rest? It's, it's the night, it's the night bus scene, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I just remember, I, I remember when you, you got on set, you were making a lot of demands, actually. But mm. you know, you, yeah, you, you yeah, no, it was, a good, it was good. I don't remember that. You asked the question. Don't interrupt. Yeah, Sorry. Thank you. It's, uh, I don't remember <laughs> that. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. No, yeah, no, it's a great scene. Very good scene. Come on, Daniel. I'm the most talented shrunken head in the Screen Actors Guild. In fact, I'm the only talking shrunken head in the Guild. <laughs> Honestly. Were you big fans of, of Harry Potter before you got involved in this? Um, well, we've read the books, haven't we? Yeah, so, well, um, I was like half... I, I just finished the first one when we heard there were auditions for the, uh, for the film, so I thought... Mm. And, like, you did, obviously, I didn't realise how much of a big scale it was on. But uh, I knew that there was definitely something about them. We thought it was going to be a low-budget number. Well, uh... <laughs> so, you, so what about you? Uh, well, I just read the first one, and then, as James and Oliver said, the, yeah, auditions came up, and then had to really keep on reading more and more and more, yeah. finding out more about the film. Is it true for your part in Harry Potter you were cast by headhunters? No, that was only you, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. Well, how did you get your star parts? Well, um, we heard that there was an open audition up in Leeds. Um, and uh, we thought, well, why not go for it, yeah. What about you? Uh, mine was pretty much the same because I'm from Leeds, so mine was at the open audition as well. But I, and I remember all the people queuing up the stairs mm. and everyone was there with the Harry Potter books. <laughs> and and they'd, they'd put glasses on without lenses in. And I was just, I was just there with... I had a little small CV. And um, I was like, OK, I've got no chance mm. of this at all. What about you? Uh, my manager... Uh, was onto the cast. Oh, my director. manager! Oh! <laughs> 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 uh, well, he was onto the casting directors and all that about it. So I went for an audition over in Ireland and then I was asked to come over here to do a screen test mm. for either Seamus or Neville Longbottom. So I was there, oh, nice and look, I might get a part now. Ah, great. And how did they actually break this wonderful news to you? I didn't know I had the part until uh, the actual read through. I had to read for. I was told then I was going to read for Seamus and then they said, well, you've read it all really well, so we'll uh, like to take you on and all that. So went on and on from there again. OK, what, what, when did you hear? Um, mine was about two or three days after the screen test <laughs> and suddenly my mum got a phone call and I was just carried on playing and, um, and she just, I opened the door and I said, who is it? She says, it's, it's Lynn from your, your agency. And I said, oh, OK, um, well, and she went, she gave me the thumbs up and I just ran in the room, oh started jumping God. up and down on the sofa with my friend. It was really cool. What about you, fellas? Um, well, we were just in the uh, front room and, like, the phone rang, so my mum answered it and, uh, apparently, this lady at the other end said, uh, hi, is the mum of the Weasley twins there? I think she said, no, I think you got the wrong number or something. <laughs> oh, God, your mum blew it for you. Uh, <laughs> that was it. 
Hey, Johnny, Johnny, do you want to know how I got the part? No. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hey, guys, you want to know how I got the part? Mm, well, no, not really. Ooh. Sorry about that, fellas. Now, if you could play any other characters uh, in the Harry Potter films, who, who do you think you'd like to play? Um, who... I guess a bad guy would be pretty cool, like Draco Malfoy. But yeah. I remember the first time I read um, The Philosopher's Stone, yeah. I put my dressing gown on and said, I pretend to be Harry running around the house. And I can't believe I just told you that. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> I'm good, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> What's the strangest thing fans have ever asked you? Well, they all ask, can, they, can uh, we get them a part in the film? But... Yeah. Well, that's what they Do they? Ask. In Ireland, they're, yeah. they're, they're asking you for employment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <nice. laughs> You'll be able to get me a job on Harry Potter. <laughs> if it's a lady, I bet you say, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me your number there and yeah. I'll uh, get I'll have a word, in. yeah. No, but what, have you ever had any really bizarre things happen to you? Um, somebody gave me a pepper at the Kleptomania mm. that we did. Mm. The what? Kleptomania? C Kleptomania. Oh, it right. was a signing event. New convention, thank you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, somebody gave me a pepper and you got something got, even um, stranger. Yeah, we've got a bra. With potatoes in it. <laughs> so I don't and we're quite... still to this day trying to figure out what, what that's What kind of for. tribute is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What must go through someone's head when they think, I know what's going to really impress the twins. <laughs> I know what's going through my head. How do we tell you apart? Um, what would you say are the, the key? What do you, how, I mean, how does your mum do it? That on there. Yeah. I've got a mole on my neck there. And right, right. James isn't. I haven't. So. <laughs> That's it, we have to look for the mole. Because you're not actually <laughs> ginger, are you? No. no, no. It's uh, dyed hair. That's a bottle with uh, dark brown. And think... what do you think? How do you feel being ginger? I've got used to it now. Yeah, it's I... like almost three years. When we told people, like we told our close friends that we were in Harry Potter, and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. And then we were walking to school with ginger hair. I was like, <laughs> what like, we yeah, no one would do that. So. <laughs> 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 Who would dye their hair? Ginger? Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> I could play a Weasley in the next film. No, you couldn't. What's the problem? Okay, do you have a twin? No. Do you have ginger hair? No, but I have a bra full of potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, your character Neville, they've sort of <laughs> clowned you up a bit for this yeah. thing. What have they done to you? Because you looked a bit different when I was looking at some of the some of the rushes there. Yeah, um, there's the false teeth, which are all yellow and crooked, and we've got the two sizes, two big shoes. They've gone for the big clown shoes. Yes. <laughs> and what about this something with the ears? Yeah, they there? put plastic behind the ears to make them stick out more. Um, <laughs> Now, in Lupin's class this time, we learn about the boggart, which is obviously the thing you fear the most. That's what the boggart turns into. What would be your own personal boggart? Um, I'd say a big hairy rat. Rats? Mm, can't stand them. Or mice. And do you have to use... Do you ever come across rats in this? Do you have to... Only, I know your brother's got... Only on uh, King's Cross Station last year. And it, but it was an animatronic one. Yeah. Until they did the real thing where it was a real one. And I still thought that it was an animatronic one until this thing jumps at me. <laughs> yeah, they made a real rat jump at you. Well, it didn't do it because they told it to. It was just looking <laughs> at me. It did it because it was genuinely yeah, vicious. Yeah, it really <laughs> didn't like me, yeah. What magical power or spell would really come in handy in everyday life? Mine would probably be just so uh, all the girls. Just like <laughs> every single one. He says with an Irish twinkle in his eye. <laughs> all the girls, Johnny, all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, listen, fellas, thank you very much for, for talking to me. He doesn't have many friends. This means a lot to him. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Not to the extent I think we go to it. No. But you have to be in Slytherin, because if you're in Gryffindor, you can't do anything wrong. You yeah. have to be good. Yeah. At least in Slytherin, you have the privilege to do everything now and then, you know. Yeah. Can you put in a word with the sorting hat to get me in? Um. Mm. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'd okay. be a real help to them. Yeah. Some head now. Legs There's so many start. situations where you think, God, if only I had a shrunken talking head to help me out of this scrape. Exactly. <laughs> Tom. Do blondes really have more fun? <laughs> well, I couldn't really say that, as I'm not a, uh, a natural blonde. I understand you have to constantly bleach your hair to keep it that I have done for many a, many a year now. Yeah. Thank how's God that? It. How's that? I mean, do, 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 do you despise that process? I noticed you've chopped it all off. No, so that, it wasn't it wasn't a, a chore, so to speak. It was all right. I got yeah. used to it. Hey, Tom! You'd look good in dreadlocks, and I'd look great as a blonde. You want to swap? Not particularly, nah. You, I think your hair matches yourself personally, so I think if I keep my bonnet and you keep yours, we'll be rolling. Oh, could I maybe borrow your shirt then? Do you get trailers? Your own trailers each? When, when you're on <laughs> location. Yeah, on location, yeah. No, no, no. Do you have any requirements, you always say? I mean, do, do you have any there? That... Well, uh, I, just, I just need a cup of coffee, a cup of tea or something. No, is that it? Cup of tea? Well, what? What do you mean? Don't you have special request? I love the idea of you saying, no, I want this, this, and this. We're not, he has quite, a we're not, we're not very celebrity. No, you're not really celebrity, are you? Nah. You, don't, you don't say, I want just this particular type of M&M. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, brown ones. No brown ones, yeah. yeah. What about you? Uh, uh, what's your thing you like? Additive. What's your special requirements? Well, uh, drinks, just a cold drink. And I'm fine, because they've got a CD player in the, music. the caravan. I just love music, so as long as I've got a drink and a CD player, that's fine. Other than the questions I've asked, what are the most ridiculous questions fans have asked you? They asked you at second premiere, and, and I'm sure the third one coming up, they'll ask me again, which part do I play? Am I pl or do I play the same part? It's like, no, I've uh, changed the no. part <laughs> to part Harry. Actually, That's uh, the weird thing. It's just, yeah, I'm yeah, now yeah. That's the twist, yeah, you see it there. What about oh, you? I've, I've... Same question. Uh, what toothpaste do you use? <laughs> what? Oh, You've been asked what toothpaste do you use? Yeah, just some random question out of the blue. What a stupid question. So what's the answer? Oh, you've got to ask you. Don't I have this is an important question here. Do you think your stardom gets you a lot more attention from the lady? <sighs> to be fair, it's done me no favours. It must have. No, you, that's what you were thought of, wouldn't you? I, I would, to be fair, I would have thought the same. Couple no, films. I really would have thought. So. I yeah. thought well, you'd be cracking away. The ones that don't know you, they want to they wanna be with you. It's the ones that know you that don't, which is strange. Yeah. I consider myself an all right bloke, but... I'm so the people actually all around you know you anyway, the probably ones you fancy, they're not impressed by it. No, they? And the ones you don't know are the ones you fancy, but you don't know them. Yeah, I don't <laughs> particularly have any... Not interest, but I don't know them, so to speak, and they're the ones who obviously see the, the So lights. you're saying you've never, you, you never... You never pull off the back of... No. Harry Potter has not, has not, has not accounted for one lovely lady. <laughs> Ask a question, then. Go on, Jahed. OK, this is for Joshua and Jamie. I don't like the way Tom's character treats you two in the movies. So why don't you leave him and you two can hang out with me? You need the alpha mentality first, mate. You do need the alpha mentality, no doubt about that. Yeah. It's in the jeans. In the jeans. It's in the jeans. In the jeans is something you can't really wear. <laughs> As you keep pointing out. Thank you. Any other questions, Drehead? <laughs> when are you going? <laughs> very funny. Listen, fellas, thank you very much no for worries, talking lad. to us. Appreciate Cheers. talking to you. Say nice goodbye, Drehead. Bye. 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 There. So what have you heard about Harry Potter before you actually got involved in it? David, what have you heard? I'd only read a bit of the first book and I just knew about all the media for all of it, you know. But um, I'd not read um, books two or three. I just read a bit of it. And I'd seen the films. OK, so you've never read anything about your... You didn't read the book that this is based on? Um, not until I got the part, no. I have to admit, not until I got the part. Okay, what about you, Gary? What did you hear about Harry Potter? What was your Much the preconceptions? Same, really, um, I had read the first book, and um, I got one up on Dave. You see, I'd read, I'd, I'd finished the first book. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, in it. There were no pictures in it. You kept reading. Yeah, you got to the pictures. You know, yeah. Do either of you have kids yourselves? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, not myself. Yeah. Are, are they into Harry Potter? Or yeah. Too young. Yeah. Um, Alf is fourteen, so. So he's right in the age. He's, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other two, Charlie's four and a half and Gulliver's six. So they've been here and they've got, you know, obviously it's an added thing that, that they like Harry Potter, yeah. but their dad's in Harry Potter. I know, so. is that, are they more excited about that than sort of anything else you've done? Yeah, I'm a hero at school. Yeah. I'm big, big noise at their school. Suddenly you are a really cool dad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I've, the best thing about it, I think, is knowing, knowing kids and kids getting absolutely mental when they're here, isn't it? 
Yeah. Any kid you meet and anyone I know tells the kids you meet that you're in it and they just they get short of breath. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, they also get excited well, about the film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, I, uh, when I told uh, the Gulliver Six, uh, he, he went into his school and he ran up to his mate Omar and uh, he just said, guess what? He said, guess what? He said, guess who's in Harry Potter? And Omar went, Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he's yes. read the books. Uh, he's read the books. <laughs> he's read the books. Yeah. But in general, what kind of attracted you to doing the film? For me, I, 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 was, I was seen for the first film to, um, for Quirrell, which is why I read the first book. Right. And then, then when I saw it, and I know Ian Hart did play Quirrell, I know he had such a good time making it. And um, I really like kids' films. I really enjoy being part of them. And since this is, like, the, the biggest of them all, I just thought, what, what fun it would be. And then met everyone involved, and I'm a fan of Alfonso Cuaron. And it's, um, you know... And I'm not disappointed now here at the end of it. I've had a great time making it. What about you, Gary? What did you like about particularly Sirius Black? Were you surprised to get a character with that kind of... Well, with the sort of the dichotomy that Sirius Black yeah. has in, a, like, a children's book, to find a character with that kind of darkness? Well, well like it's that. great that you... I mean, I've, you know, I've played... Uh, you know, You're no stranger to darkness. Of, yeah. No, no stranger to darkness. <laughs> to the dark, John, the, <laughs> the dark side. <laughs> and um, so it was great to be on, really, to play a good guy. I mean, he is a good guy. So, I mean, we think he's a bad guy, yeah. but, but, you know, so that was... So, so that, I liked that dynamic, that twist at... the sort of twist at the end. And was there any sort of sense of being, like, <clears throat> new kids in a sort of established cast, almost new kids in a school, ironically? Yeah, yeah, there's an element of that. It's kind of a welcome from everyone that's worked on it before. Because all, almost all the crew have worked on it yeah. before. Yeah. But it's, but it's such a, f a friendly bunch of people. It's been a great experience. Yeah. In that, but did you in feel that that sort of... It, was it, did they gang up on you ever? Tease no, you? No, I... It... No. Funny enough, it was... They never it, got it, in a circle around you and jabbed you and teased you? <laughs> um... <laughs> Stole no, things from you. No, that Sweet. happens. That happens somewhere else. <laughs> okay. you know, before you get here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's another place. They <laughs> yeah, do your that. agent deals with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, it's been a wonderful experience. What about the kids? What was it like working with them? Did they behave all right? Yeah, they're great. Daniel's a hell of a nice boy. He's a really great guy, and he's got me into some very good music. Yeah, da I've been listening to some. Ah. Yeah. I was, I was quite I was passionate still about listening it. to we, the we, Beatles we, until I came here. You know. Yeah. But he's, yeah, he's very passionate, but he's got great taste for a kid of his age. He's very dedicated, serious about it, and, and focused, and... Because he's actually, I mean, he said he has, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big fan of yours, particularly as an actor. I think you are his, his, his idol as an actor. Is it quite odd to sort of act with a kid when you know you're his hero? Is that sort of off but You sort of think, I've got to be really good here, because this kid... Yeah, yeah, you think, I've got, yeah, I've got to be good here. <laughs> yeah, for the, for the kids. For the, for the kids. I'm doing oh, it for the kids, I'm doing it for the, the kids. kids. Um, a lot on the werewolf thing. You are quite lupine, genuinely. Well, I am now, yeah, yeah. But I, I've put a lot of effort into that. But um, it's no, it was, it, was, it was good to do. Um, you can say at least once in your career you've done the whole werewolf transformation yeah. thing. But it wasn't really fun to do. It was, was a bit, it? well, no, because it's really uncomfortable to do. It was a terrible day when we were shooting, and you have these lenses, and you can hardly see anything, and a light would be blinding to you. And we were on a very dark set, and I was led out, and it was the middle of summer, and they opened the big studio door, and the sunlight hit my eyes, and I actually, and I had the teeth still in, and I actually was like, Ugh. I am blinded. <laughs> oh, he's taking a bit serious, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> As he he's in character, as soon as you leave yeah, the trailer, yeah, yeah. ah, the light. Yeah. Okay, if 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 David genuinely had an animagus, what do you think his his animal would be? I don't know. I think there's a real softness to David, like yeah. a deer or something. I could see him as a deer. What about Gary? How would you um, apply to that now? I'd say some kind of bird. A woman? Some... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some kind of bird. Your teeth on the table, guys. <laughs> yes. An old woman. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to interpret it like that. <laughs> Excuse me, sirs, before we go, I just wanted you to know I put both of you on my resume as my co-stars. So if anybody calls, could you just tell them you both learned a lot from me? You should quit while you're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny, what are we doing next? I'm just writing questions for Robbie Coltrane and Sir Michael Gambon. So this is heavyweight stuff. I've got to concentrate for a bit here, Dread. 
Yeah, okay. Oh, could you ask a question for me? I just want to ask them what it is like to wear a T-shirt. You think I'm going to ask Sir Michael Gambon and Robbie Coltrane what it's like to wear a T-shirt? It's ridiculous. I mean, laughing stock. All right, a suit then. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. Oh. What's it like to wear a suit? Uh, Michael, were you, were you a Harry Potter fan before you got this role? How much did you know of the Potter phenomenon? Not a lot. I'd seen the films, and I haven't read the, the other two books, read the third one, mm. but I like them very much, yeah. And, and obviously, with, with, uh, with you know, you taking Richard's place in there, yeah. I wonder how, how you sort of approach this role then. I just did it, did my own thing, you know. I mean, I, I, uh, I do it with a slight Irish accent, which I think just seems to be right. I don't yeah. know why. It's just when I got on the set the first day, Alfonso, I said, uh, I'll just do it. And, I, and he said, uh, he came up and he said, what's that accent you're doing? <laughs> and I said, uh, well, it's a bit of Irish, you know, because I am Irish and I feel sort of Irish and this long beard and the long wig. So he said, all right, leave it in. No one's ever mentioned it since. And it is kind of, uh, the part, part of Dumbledore is, is a sort of, uh, a, a kind of, a classic role, isn't it? I mean, I, I know you've compared it, I think, to King Lear, I read. Yeah, well, you, can't, you feel a bit like King Lear, dressed like that, and then he's all-knowing and all-powerful, isn't he? He's, he's a bit nicer than King Lear. King Lear's a bit miserable, isn't he? Absolutely. He no, he wasn't. wasn't. He's not very happy. But not very good at relationships. No. <laughs> no, really he doesn't like, he doesn't like his children, right? No, he wasn't good with kids, was no, he? No. no. Robbie, you are barely over six feet tall. In the movie, you're obviously... Huge. Eight foot six. Eight foot six. So what do they, I mean, without giving away too many secrets, how do they beef that up then? Well, it's mainly done with very clever camera angles. And there are one or two other tricks which I can't possibly discuss. But at any time, are you very, have you got tall shoes to take you up oh, to yeah. an enormous height? Oh, yeah, height? oh, yeah. And so what's the biggest height you actually physically get to? Uh, eight foot six. And how does life feel when you're walking around eight foot six? Very perilous. Because you've got all this hair like that, and you can't really see your, your feet, of course. OK, but quite inconvenient life at that height. Very inconvenient, and the, and the costume's very heavy. The costume weighs about 90 pounds, something like that. And not only does the costume weigh 90 pounds, but it's made of... What's it made? It's made of... What do you used to call it? Moleskin, isn't it? Moleskin, yeah. Yeah, very thick and very hot. And you had to wear this, didn't you, on the, on the hottest day? It was 100 degrees, 100 degrees in, in the forest. But I have a, I have a cool suit, you see. Hey. Which is, yes, it's a vest, but it's got miles and miles of plastic tubing in it. Like a refrigerator. Very like a refrigerator. And then there's a, there's a box with ice cubes and cold water in it, and a tiny wee pump off a windscreen wiper of a car, oh, you know? What this is my question. I know it's your it question, but you let, let them answer it. Things. Robbie, sorry, your you suit. Go into, of course, they dyed the vest pink, just to yeah. make me look like a, oh, complete, a complete silly fellow. And, uh, but, and, and they do. They, they pump the water around, and it's extraordinary, because you, you know how woozy you get when you're really hot and your yeah. concentration goes... Uh, and then suddenly it's this shock of freezing cold water circling around. It's just... it's wonderful. Michael, how excited were the, were, the, were the young children in your life that you were in Harry Potter? Oh, well, every, I mean, every, every boy and girl I meet asks me about being Dumbledore, so I have to... I, I do my best to... Uh, Tell them stories about it. Your young relatives, is it, is it... I mean, there must be a massive difference between that and sort of work you've done, say, doing oh, yes, the theatre and things, yes. which I would think they wouldn't particularly want to talk about. They wouldn't want to talk about Samuel Beckett's endgame, would they? <laughs> no, they <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> would to the, the eight-year-olds. Tell us another story about it, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us about Samuel <laughs> yeah. Beckett. Tell yeah. us about existential alienation. <laughs> 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 You're really watching the kind of... The, the, the kids involved in this film grow up. Is that... Uh, a, a strange experience. Well, no, no, not strange, just very interesting, really. Um, particularly this film, they're much more confident as actors, but they're much more confident as people, because they mm. are, you know, they are young teenagers now. And then one, one thing that came across, particularly in this film, is, is there is a sense of fun between them, because they've known yeah. each other for years and they get on well. So there's a good knockabout feeling between them, which means that when you do get a bit of light relief from the horrible things peering in the windows and trying to disembowel you, yeah. it's, it's a genuine relief, which I'm, I don't think they could have done when they were younger, to be honest. And I suppose they're more used to the acting now, aren't they? Yeah. After yeah, three years. Exactly. But, I mean, what they, they put more time in than probably any of us, don't they? Yeah. In oh, terms yeah. of ours. And when they're not acting, they're, uh, they're doing their school studies. So it's a long haul for them. They're they, all the time. Their concentration's astonishing. If any one of those had been the wrong person, yeah. and, I mean, not just the wrong person at the start, but had developed into yeah. the wrong, yeah, wrong person. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we had this gag that we were, we were going to get stick a, a phony moustache on Daniel and get him to turn up with a cigarette holder and a couple of babes <laughs> in a fur coat and say, my trailer is too small, love, I'm going back to it until, you know... <laughs> got the nightmare child <laughs> The nightmare child scenario, yeah. OK, head, go on, I know you've got a question. Crack away, go on. 
Okay, great. Uh, Robbie, I think Hagrid uses the same hairdresser as I use. Do you think I need a new hairstyle? I think you might have one or two split ends there, matey. But uh, no, I think it's I think it's very you. It's very you. Ah, great. All right. I'll keep it like this. Go on. Uh, you got a question for, for Michael? Hello. Michael. Hello, Sir Michael. Hello. You guys are all classically trained actors. Could you get me a role as that skull in Hamlet? Yeah, yeah I think that'd be a good idea because yeah. you'd be great as a skull. Mm -hmm. A whoever, chatty Yorick. Whoever played Hamlet would be lucky to have holding him. Lovely. Well, fair enough. Next question. Uh, Michael again. I felt like scratching my knee for the last six years now. So, for the next movie, could you get Professor Dumbledore to cast a spell to get me a body? Yeah, I think that could be done. What sort Sorry. of body would you well, create long, from Long, thin, distorted. Sounds like me. Are you finished then, Head? Yeah. Ha, <laughs> for now. Do you know, it's a waste of time even asking you to do those questions. We learnt nothing. It's always about you. It's never actually anything interested in them. Well, I've had a good teacher. Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, fellas. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> when Harry Potter fans encounter you in the street, yeah. did you, do they do they sort of do you get the feeling they hate you or, or love to hate you? What do you find? I don't get noticed in the streets because you're so slim. I have to say, you look more svelte. I know. Than the um, other films, what's happened? Just lost weight, you know, just like Where'd that. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I I know. Know. Was that a problem? Because, I mean, your character is implicitly meant to be chubby Ooh. chap. Yeah, well, what, I, I did wear a fat suit in the film, which was like, which got bigger every film. Um, and that's, that's how I got bigger, really. Fiona, <laughs> what sort of reaction do you get? If, if children are being carried by their mothers and the, the mothers are walking ahead, the children often start crying if they <laughs> really? see me. And the mother doesn't know why the child is crying. <laughs> 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 do you get fan mail, hate mail? How does it work? I get fan mail, but it goes through Leaveston, so I don't get anyone to hate mail. What, what sort of nice things do people say to you? Well, some people say how, oh, I, I, like, I like your other films you've done. And I was like, what other films? Because I don't know how I don't know. Right. <laughs> so have you had anything nasty sent to you or any? No, no, I get a lot of birthdays. People want oh. things signed for their birthdays. Yeah. Oh. Do you know, it's moved brilliantly on to my next question, which was, I mean, how has your popularity soared amongst children, nephews, nieces? Deep respect. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and not a little fear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know how they feel. What about you? What experience you've had with some of your younger rallies? There's some that they, they just can't believe it. My father lives in Ireland and cars go slowly past his house because they say that Harry Potter's grandfather lives in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's entirely They've got it really wrong, haven't they? <laughs> this, um, existential fact. Yeah. yeah. What about you? How has, it, how has it sort of changed, kind of changed your life on, um, on every level? It really, it, because I don't get noticed, it hasn't really changed my life a lot. <laughs> No, but I'm just saying, amongst your peers, though, there's that yeah. knowledge that you <laughs> because of... <laughs> Sorry. I mean, do you miss out on the fact that you're not with, like, Daniel is with yeah. a gang of kids, yeah, and actually all your Hogwarts. bits are separate? You film with him a bit at the start, yeah. and you don't see I, all the no, others. No, no, I, I really do want to go in Hogwarts. I, I want to go into Hogwarts. We like... want to go to Hogwarts. We want to see what all this <laughs> like fuss sports is about. Parent, day. What about, like, um... Well, I asked Joanne parents, Rowling, you know. Like, Parents' Day? Or... But yes, yeah, yeah, the, yes, yeah, the yeah. Founders' Day. Yeah. We said, why can't the Dursleys go to the Hogwarts on the Founders' Day yeah. and see Harry Potter in his school? And she said, I what don't know why, but <laughs> I said, so then they can go. She said, no. <laughs> I, th I think it would be a disaster. Yes, jumping the shark. It's jumping would... the shark, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. OK, now, Pam, what were your feelings about joining what is some regard as one of the nation's most awful families? Sheer terror, really. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sheer terror. So no misgivings about it? No, it? no, 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 not at all, no. Oh. And yet you have to suffer kind of facial hair fangs and... Mm. and not a good hair colour. How did you feel about that? I loved it. I do love it. Because the, the good bit is when you take it off at the end of the, the, the long working day and you look comparatively OK underneath and you think, I'm not so bad after all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you think that the Dursleys aren't caricature though? No! But you, well, you breed problem... bulldogs and look like a bulldog in it. Uh, not now. Do. Not now people... you've got your special thing on. Thank you. No, people do behave like this. I mean, frequently as actors, and I, I'm sure these other actors have experienced this, you'll see someone or meet someone and you'll say, if I put that on camera, no one would believe the extremity of it. These people aren't that extreme, really. It's just that we're looking at them through a particular lens. Um... But also, don't forget, there's been a progression through the films in the relationship. Mm. So that when you started out, Harry Potter was very much like Cinderella. 
Yeah. Mm. Uh, then he went to Hogwarts and came back with some magic. And in the second movie, you, you then got this thing of him having powers and, and putting the family under pressure. Uh, and then in this third film, the, apart from the terrible things that happened to Aunt, Aunt Marge, the, the whole house is, you know, shakes with, with, with fear mm. because of what he might do. Yeah. As Harry Potter gets older, uh, the Dursleys are more threatened. So they are turning from dominating him to being terrified of him. So the boot goes onto the other foot. Um, all your characters are obviously uh, muggles, but if your characters could have one magical power, yeah. what do you think it would be? I'm a very, very um, nosy, curious person, so I'd quite like to be able to be invisible occasional, occasionally and eavesdrop on various situations. Yeah, and peek. Mm. The royal family, for instance. Yes. <laughs> that was a good one, actually. That was a good one, wasn't it? The invisibility oh, seems to be a big favourite. Come have, on. They go together. I would like to be invisible too. Yeah. Okay. I know she's been quite quiet this time, so go on. You can have a good question here. Go on. It's, it's the Dursleys. Oh come on! They're not. They're the actors. I'm really scared of it's them. It's the actors. They're real. No, no, no. Head off. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dursleys, <laughs> for joining us here. Thank you. That's what it is to be all mouth and no trousers, it isn't is. it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit. I can't. <laughs>stuff that takes place outdoors in this in this story and uh, it was pretty much Stuart who said no, we have to go to Scotland he knew all these places I mean what, what do I know yeah. so uh, he uh, he really fought for it but also it gave the film air I mean everything it doesn't matter how beautiful a set is it gave the exterior. film air it gives it space and scale yeah I mean you can recreate a certain amount digitally but there's nothing like the real thing and it and really also, does I'm gonna now, Howard is involved in a natural landscape and and it's not only the castle that you see in that natural landscape but now you see the kids pretty much walking out of a castle yeah on a mountain. The other thing we tried to do was tie up the spaces, wasn't yep. it? So, so you, you, you know, you're in the uh, hospital, uh, school hospital, the infirmary, but you see through a corridor to the clock tower. Yeah. You follow that clock tower okay. down to the courtyard below. That courtyard is connected by a bridge to to the landscape. Didn't J.K. Rowling actually draw you a little map of this? Some kind of oh, little yeah. sketch Originally, of... on the on the first movie, th yeah. there is a piece of paper. But, yeah, <laughs> I very, love the fact you know, it starts with that. Very significant piece of paper. And she did in a hotel yeah, room. It. She said, this is the world. Reading the book, uh, you know, I think possibly the most challenging scene in it is, without doubt, the, sh the shrieking shack. Um, I just wonder how you then bring that from the script and collaborate to bring that onto the film. The writing was going on. What started to dictate a lot of the writing started to be Stuart's design of the shrieking shack. OK, so what, what's that, what goes on in that meeting? We I think, first of all, we, uh, we settled the exterior. Because we're in a you know, remote mountainscape in Scotland on yeah. a snowy mountaintop, what looked very good in that situation was a very tall vertical tower. So we, that was, I guess, the earliest decision, this mm -hmm. kind of tall vertical shape, really. It was that, and, and you, you wanted to do everything wooden? Yes. Un unlike the rest of Hogwarts, which is, yeah. you know, stone, stone, you know, massive masonry. This was a rickety wooden structure. And then, I guess, the next step from there, I don't know if it was you or me, or but uh, we decided that if it, it was in this incredibly exposed situation, wouldn't it be great if it moved? If it actually it did move. I mean, big time, didn't it? It was a... It really, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was nice. Involving scene. John Richardson, special effects, you know, a massive mechanical and of course. rig. And Michael, yes. Yeah, so it, that then, you yeah, then take that on as, as, as your problem now. Yeah. What did you see as the problems of this one? I mean, uh, instantly you must have thought... The fact that uh, we film on very wide-angle lenses with a lot of... Um, <laughs> a it's lot a, it's of moving point. cameras, so physically, where do I put the lights to illuminate it? Yeah. We, we, it's a nice, great challenge, no, but, brilliant But, but challenge. in the early stage, it was a conversation... The biggest conversation that these two guys have is about light sources. 
I think so. It's about lunch. Followed by lunch. What are we going to eat? Yeah, that's the first conversation. What are we going to drink? Yeah. The shrinking tank is supposed to be a place without light, wasn't it? It's completely boarded up. There is no natural light source. There's no electricity in this kind of mess. No candles. What the hell do you do? So what do you do? Our conversation was. Well, well, basically, it was very, very soft light, so it'll be quite sort of very moody and with no apparent uh, source because there are no windows. The only thing that there is is because it's such an old and decrepit building because it's always moving all the time, Stuart made cracks between the boards. So it's almost <laughs> as if the blinding light from the snow is coming through and just giving you a very soft light. It's also incredibly dusty. Uh, so you have the feeling there's a sort of, uh, yeah, just like, just dust Johnny. in here. Johnny! No, not now, Ed, not now. These are three very important people. They designed you into this film, they can design you out again. <laughs> then what are they doing talking to you? I noticed that th this change in how the children are dressed. They're, they're much more relaxed, much more casual. No, the thing is, is that they are 13. This is the passage from childhood into teenage years. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's the moment in which the boogeyman doesn't live in the closet yeah. or under the bed, yeah. you know, the boogeyman resides inside you. Yeah. So the, the, the whole thing, we wanted to bring uh, a really raw naturaliz naturalism to the kids. Yeah. yeah so we, we, uh, the theory behind was that the more naturalistic we were with the kids, with the performance, with the, the blocking, with the way they behave, the more magical the magic was going to be. And did you think it loosened them up, having their own kind of... I, I, well, I uh, only done this first film, but yeah. I, uh, something I know is that the kids really felt comfortable with the oh, clothes. In the beginning, they just loved the idea that there was a bit of individualism there. It wasn't just all stamped out like the school uniform thing. Obviously, they got used to it, but they just... They just... With the school uniforms, for instance. So what I, we ask is, OK, guys, these are the uniforms. What would you do with them? And you will see some kids with the ties out, some with the ties all the way to here, some, some, some of them very tidy. And uh, so it's just pretty much like seeing kids walking out of school. Apparently, there was a lot of joking around on set, including whoopee cushions. Is this true? Uh, it was not a cushion. It was like a... Now it's very modern. It's now, time, now it's a machine that yeah. is remote control operated. Yes. And you did this, did you? No, I was, it was Michael Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> was it? <laughs> oh, name, name. Some bags down in front of a girl. <laughs> Actually, it was, it was very good because it was a bunch of sleeping bags and, and, and Dan has us to have his sleeping bag next to this particular girl. And, as, and, uh, <laughs> and then the thing is, is uh, that we hid this machine in his sleeping bag. <laughs> 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 and through the take, the beautiful thing of that take is, ama is how amazing Dan tried to stay in character. You know, you will hear the... the, the, the it? Was it, yeah. it was as if it was a normal, regular take. And there's like hundreds of kids there all asleep yeah. and these got the characters and all of a sudden you hear this noise and Dan just stays in character. Just stays in character. For about what, 20 seconds. What it was amazing is that girls were the first, like saying, hey, it was not me. <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. 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 it wasn't me either. I thought one of the most uh, kind of curious casting decisions was, well, him. Me? Yes, you. Why did you invent this? It's, uh, in, the, in the magical world they have these fellows there, right? Uh, they they are shrunken heads and they don't in the in the in the night bus they don't they don't have a radio they have mm. a shrunken head there. And what did JK um, make of your? Because it's your idea to have the shrunken head, isn't it? Yeah, with the shrunken head, what happened is that when we proposed that, you're rolling. She says, "Yeah, that makes perfect sense." And I think that in another in one of the books there is a mention by the. Just in, a mention. Uh, there is. There is a, in there, there's nocturnal alley. A nocturnal alley. Yeah. Something. There's they a shrunken head. Shrunken yeah. That was yeah. my cousin yeah. Hedy. Made yeah. just perfect <laughs> sense. And having Lenny Henry doing that was just absolutely hilarious. I'll thank you all in my Oscar speech. Alfonso, <laughs> guys, thank you very much for talking to me. It was brilliant. Thank you.